Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a really fun paneled fondant cake effect. So you're going to need some fondant at the ready in three different colors. I've chosen white, navy blue, and light blue. Into the light blue, I'm adding in a little extra gel food color, and I'm not going to need it through completely. That way you get these really cool little lines running all the way through the fondant, and it just gives you a bit more of a marbled, realistic marble sort of effect. Roll all three colors into logs, combine them, give them a good twist, and then fold them in on each other again. And continue to twist until you're happy with the marbled effect. The more you twist and fold, the denser the marble will be. Roll it into a bowl, add a little bit of cornstarch to make sure it doesn't stick to your countertop, and then roll it out with a very large silicon rolling pin to about three or so millimeters in thickness. Make sure that you're always grabbing the fondant, rotating it to ensure it doesn't stick to your surface or your countertop. And give it a flip just to make sure that you like the marble pattern. It could be that the underside has a nicer looking marble pattern. Once you're done, you'll want to cut little panels of fondant. So I just made it random here. I've got my bench scraper to help me cut everything. It's nice and sharp so my panels are coming out really neat. There's also a ruler on there, which makes it pretty easy. Not that I'm using it, um, but if you want it to be really um, precise, you could always just use a ruler. This has been cut slightly taller than my cake. You could make it the same height as your cake or slightly taller like me. Flip them on the underside, see which side you like best, and then lay them flat on a cookie sheet lined with baking paper. And then I'm creating an edible paint. This is is vodka with edible luster dust. You could use rose water spirit, lemon juice, or white vinegar instead. And I'm just painting very thin little lines along the grain. So I'm either going directly over the um, obvious lines or right next to them to complement. Once all of your panels have some really pretty gold detailing, allow them to dry overnight and then build your cake. I worked with a six inch cake and a four inch cake, filled it with buttercream and creating a crumb coat with that buttercream. I'll have it linked in the eye icon up top and the description box below the frosting that I've used here. Bring the lip of frosting to the center and into the fridge to set for 20 minutes and then do the same for your four inch cake. I'll also have a ganache recipe listed for you guys in the description box and up top in the eye icon as well. This is a crumb coat for my 4 inch attached to a 4 inch cake board and it's going into the fridge for 20 minutes as well. Now that a crumb coat is set I'm creating a second layer of frosting this will be the final coat. Once it's cleaned up on the sides and the top you can apply your panels. So I'm just sticking them directly on top pushing them firmly on one side my frosting is still nice and wet, so they're sticking to the cake very well. You could always decide to trim them down at this stage as well. So it's always easy to make them bigger because you can always cut them down, but you can't make them longer, so don't make them too short from the start. Here I'm adding a bit more frosting to make it extra sticky. And I'm overlapping them slightly, making sure to line the base of the panel with the cake board. That way I know they're going to be standing tall and straight and not lopsided. Let that rest while we create the funnel coat on our top tier. Kneading it up and into the freeze as she goes for half an hour so that the frosting becomes nice and firm and hard and we can handle it with our hands without messing up the frosting. Into the six inch, I'm adding three bubble tea straws in a triangular formation, cut flush with the top of the cake. And then I'll be sticking my top tier on with a little bit of buttercream. Release your four inch from that decorative little board at the bottom. So I have a four inch cake board still applied underneath this cake. And I'm sticking it onto my six inch with a little bit of frosting. At the base, I have a small circular piping tip with some of that buttercream and I'm creating a decorative pearl border just to hide the seam. Now that that's done, we can work on our chocolate cup. So I have some white chocolate melted here with some oil. I've added in a drop of gel food color and I've only partially mixed that through. So I have some white chocolate and blue chocolate in the bowl. 
I've used oil so that the chocolate doesn't seize when I add in gel food color. Make sure it's nice and flat and I want the opposite side to be facing outwards so what I'm doing is I'm flipping it over but first I have to apply a second layer of baking paper. Dry it over a bottle and then gently remove the baking paper and now the underside has become the outside. And this um, side is going to be a lot more marbled and neater looking which is why we did that. Apply it to your cake with a little bit of frosting and then if you like you could add in some more gold detailing over that marble effect as well just to tie it in with the cake design. And your cake is complete! I hope you guys enjoyed this video and give it a go. If you do, hashtag Rosie's dessert spot so I can see your awesome creations as well. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. We do upload a new tutorial every week. I hope you guys enjoyed this design. Very fun to do and pretty beginner level as well. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.